I recently got this question from Andre on Twitter and I love getting questions on Twitter because that usually means there's a real world problem that we can solve and that always makes for a much better video. It says, hey Aaron, can you make a video about randomization? What's the most efficient way to get a random row in my sequel? or shuffle a playlist. And I say, fantastic idea. What's your use case? How many rows? It'll help me create an example. Andre says, it's for a bookmarking site. I wanna show users some between one and 10 of their saved bookmarks. So we wanna select randomly. Some users have up to 50,000 bookmarks. It can be filtered down a bit. This is a great question. And honestly, it's kind of tough to answer. Databases are good at setting things up in order. They're good at making indexes so they can get to specific places quickly. They're bad at just saying, ah, give me whatever from wherever. That's not really what databases do. There are a few good answers for specific situations, which I know is not super satisfying, but I will show you what the specific situations are. If we run select star from bookmarks, we will limit it down to 10 because I think there are a lot in here. So we have the user ID in the URL that matches Andre's setup of users having bookmarks, but we also have a hash column, which I'll explain in a second. And just so we have enough to play with, play with if we used to select count star from bookmarks, we should have, I think it's a lot. I want to say maybe 5 million, 5.5 million rows in here. And that's the first thing that we need to talk about. If you have a huge amount of rows, getting random results out of that is going to be pretty difficult. But if you only have a few rows, we're talking many thousands, maybe you don't really need anything special. You can just do an order by Rand, which we'll do here. Let's start by selecting from bookmarks where user ID, and we'll just make one up because I think it is pretty randomly seated. So this user has 533 rows. Now to put these rows in random order or to select a random 10 amount of rows, we can just say order by Rand. This is the worst possible way to do this in terms of performance, and it's still totally fine. So maybe rule number one or rule number zero of databases is if it's fast enough, it's fast enough. And rule number one is maybe it may not always be fast enough, right? So at this point, at this point, this is fast enough. So if you have fewer than a few thousand rows, you can just throw an order by Rand limit 10 on there and you can get, you can get exactly what you're looking for. This, this is totally going to work until your data reaches a certain point. So if we remove this user ID, now we're looking across a table of 5 million rows, putting the entire table in a random order and then limiting down to 10, and it doesn't work anymore. This is gonna take, it's already taken six, seven, eight, I hope it finishes soon, number, there you go, nine seconds. So this took nine seconds across five million rows, so you can imagine 50, 100, or a billion rows, it's, it's just not gonna work. The reason that this random function is okay on a small data set and terrible on a large data set is the result set has to be produced in its entirety first, and then it's sorted, and then it's limited. Off camera, I ran the explain analyze statement, which took another 10 seconds, but this will show us what exactly is happening under the hood here. And if you look here, you can see it, the first thing it does. So this is the result of the explain analyze statement. So I ran explain analyze on select, and then you have to read it from the bottom up inside out. So the first thing that happens here is a table scan on bookmarks over 5 million rows. So it scanned the entire table, streamed the results back, then sorted them, and then limited them. So you can imagine that scanning 5 million rows takes a really long time. So what is the solution when you have a table with that many rows and you need to select a few at random? I will show you a solution that works when you have a table that has auto incrementing primary keys and there aren't many gaps in those primary keys. And so this will select 10 rows at random from a table of however big. The theory here is, is pretty straightforward. We're gonna do select star from bookmarks where ID in, and then we're gonna generate a list of IDs to put in here. So we're just gonna generate a list of 10 random numbers. There are a few gotchas though. So if we start with select max ID, this will tell us how many rows we have in the table. We have to say what table from bookmarks. This will tell us how many rows we have in the table. This is why it's important that there aren't big gaps because we're just gonna blindly generate these IDs, not actually pull them from the table. Let's go ahead and just set max equal to that select max. And right here, we're just, we're creating a variable. You don't have to do this in the database. You could send this over from your application if you wanted to, that's totally fine. So now if we do select max, we should see that number. Now we can do select star from bookmarks where ID equals 
max. And there you go. So now we're pulling that very last row out of the table. So that's kind of a good start. We know that we know that our range needs to be between one and max, right? So that's the that's the logical limit of the IDs of this table. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say select uh, a number between one and the maximum. And this is how you do it. You round a random function times, you have to do this max min juggling thing here. So by default, select rand is just between zero and one. And so this is the way that you get between a bounded set. So we're gonna change this to the one, we're just gonna hard code, and then the max will feed in as the variable. So if we make that a little bit prettier, we see, all right, cool. Now we're starting to generate some random IDs. What if we did select star from bookmarks where ID equals, boy, seems like that should be a lot faster, right? Well, unfortunately, and we didn't even get a result. So unfortunately, the problem here is this is a volatile function. And so it's being run over and over and over. If we were to say set rand, uh, rand ID equal to that, now it's going to go do the direct primary key lookup. And so now that's going to be super fast, but you see it doesn't change. It's looking up the same one over and over and over. So anytime you add this rand function to your query, it becomes a volatile query that has to be reevaluated for every single row. So it's going through every single row and saying, let's generate a new random ID between one and the max. Does this ID match? Great, return it. If not, let's move on to the next row, generate a new random ID. We can't be having that. So we're going to do something wacky here, but I think it's very technically interesting. We're going to create a recursive CTE. So if we say with recursive IDs as, then we can open these parentheses. And what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to write a subquery in here to generate a temporary table. And this subquery is going to run over and over and over again until we tell it to stop. Now, Planet Scale is built on top of Vitess, and Vitess doesn't yet have support for recursive CTEs. So I'll show you in a second how to do this without a recursive CTE. But let's move forward forward on this for now. So if we say select one as n, and then we say rand as rand, this is our initial statement. And then our recursive statement, we can say union all select uh, n plus one and rand again from the table that we're currently building. So this is where the recursive part comes in. So we're selecting from the table and we're building up this table as we go rand from IDs where and this is where we can say, let's create 10 records. So with this temporary table, we can then say select star from IDs. So what we've done is we've created a recursive temporary table with this as the initial statement, this is the recursive statement, and then we're gonna select from it. So now we have a list of 10 random numbers and we can treat it just like a regular table. So we can just keep selecting from that over and over and over again. So you can see where this is going. So let's take this function here. And instead of just saying rand, let's say rand between, rand between. And if we select that again, now we have a list of 10 random IDs. We don't know that these IDs are present in the table. Those are just random numbers that are within the bounds of one to the maximum ID. That's what I mean when I say you can't have a lot of gaps, otherwise these IDs won't match anything. Let's go ahead and finish the thought here. So instead of select star from IDs, which is just selecting that temporary table that we created, we can say select star from IDs where ID in select ID, nope, select rand from IDs. So that should give us our 10 random rows in four milliseconds. So across five million rows, we got 10 random pretty quickly and you see that it just produces random rows all the time. So it works, it totally works. If you do have a lot of gaps, something you could try, and this is where it becomes non-deterministic, so it might not always work. Something you could try is say, give me a thousand random IDs, and then I'm actually just going to limit to 10 here. And so you could get a thousand in the inner query and then just limit down to 10 in the outer query. And that will help cover some gaps. You could try 10,000. I don't know at what point it becomes, oh, it has a max, recursive CTEs have a max iteration of a thousand. Um, you can change that, but I'm not going to. I don't know at what point this becomes non-performant. So if you have huge gaps in your primary keys, this may not be a good solution. So now we're gonna look at a technique that is resilient to gaps and doesn't require auto-incrementing primary keys but is a little bit slower. The naive way to do it would be like this. Select star from bookmarks, order, 
by Rand limit 10. And I'll let that run. We already know it's gonna take eight, nine seconds, something like that. There is a better way to do this, and that is to, instead of saying select star, say select ID. So instead of six seconds, this should take uh, less than a second. That's not bad. We'll improve this as we go, but we're already down from six seconds to under one second on a table of five million rows. There's a little bit better way to do this, but now we just have IDs. What do we do? What do we do with these IDs? We're going to look at a technique called a deferred join. So we're going to join this table back into itself to get the rest of to get the rest of the data. So we're going to say select star from bookmarks enter join and then we're going to say inner join this guy uh, we'll call this as temp on temp dot id equals bookmarks dot id and if we run that you'll see hey we're still less than a second so it's not amazing but it's better than six seconds and it's resilient to gaps in ids and if you were using uuids or guids or whatever as your ids that would also work that also means that we can add additional conditions in here so we can say where user id equals one for example and we'll get back only bookmarks for user id number one so this is much more resilient than just naively generating ids the reason that this works is we're requiring the database to do less work we can go even further by ensuring that we have a covering index over this inner query i've got a full video on covering indexes but quickly a covering index is where an index meets the needs of the entire query and so the database never has to go to the table it can satisfy everything it needs out of the index you'll know that you have a covering index when you run the explain plan on your statement you say select star from bookmarks and you run the explain on that and you don't see anything in the extra over here but if you say select id from bookmarks and you expand this extra you see using index what this means is you're using only an index you're not actually touching the table whatsoever so we're going to try to get this inner query to be an index covered query so let's just take that pop it out here and run explain on that and you'll see we're not using, we're doing a lot of stuff, but we're not using an index only, and that's because we don't have any indexes on this table at all, except the primary key. If we do show indexes from bookmarks, show index from bookmarks, we only have the primary key. So if we do alter table bookmarks, add index to user ID, this might take a second, but then when we run this explain again, we should see, if I'm correct, we should see using index in that extra column there at the end. So that has finished, and now if we run this again, using index is the very first thing we see, meaning the entire query is satisfied by the index without touching the actual table at all. So now if we run this again, you'll see this just got a whole lot faster. So if we run this again, presumably, it should be a whole lot faster. So now we're selecting out of a table, out of a table of 5 million records, we're selecting where a user has an ID of one, we're selecting random rows for that user in five milliseconds. That's pretty good. This solution is pretty good. If this works for you, I would go with it. We're gonna look at one more solution that would work on maybe even larger data sets. But what I like about this solution is it's resilient to gaps in primary keys. It actually doesn't care what type of primary key you use. You don't have to use an integer and the randomness is evenly distributed. It's not some sort of um, artificial clumping or grouping, which is going to be the case in this next example. In the previous example, that right there was doing a lot of work for us. That was taking our 5 million rows and scoping it down to, I don't know, several hundred, maybe a few thousand. But if we take that away, it, you'll see that it does blow back up to almost a second, and this is only at 5 million rows, so if you had 50, 100, it would be a lot slower. So we're gonna look at a way that we can artificially um, bucket and group some of these things. And so this is not purely random, but it is close to random. So what we need to do here is instead of just selecting from the bookmarks, we do need to do something. We need to limit this down somehow, but we want it to be kind of random. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a hash and then we're going to, we're going to generate some buckets based on that hash. So if we say alter table bookmarks, add column, let's call it hash. And we're just going to make it a four character string and we'll say generated always as, and this is a generated column. I have several videos on generated columns, but we're gonna say it's left of MD5 of the URL, and we'll just take the first four characters. So all we're doing here is we're running a hash function 
over the URL and then just taking the first four characters. It is a nonsense string. It doesn't have any semantic meaning. The only reason it exists is to help us group some of these items down a little bit. So if we run that, it takes no time at all because it is a virtual column. It doesn't actually write anything to disk, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna alter table bookmarks add index on hash. This is gonna take a second because this is actually creating an index over that new four character column. And once this is done, we can say, uh, let's do select star from bookmarks limit 10. And you'll see here's that hash. So that hash is automatically created by MySQL. It's kept up to date by MySQL. I don't have to do anything about that. If I change the URL, the hash is gonna change. Now let's look at how we can use that for some bucketing. So if we come back up here and we say, all right, this is starting to get, this is starting to get too long. 700 milliseconds has blown up into three or four seconds. We can use these new buckets. Maybe bucket would have been a better column name. We can say where hash like, and we can just say, a, where hash is like A. So this is now pseudo random. There, are these, these bookmarks now have a higher likelihood of being returned together as a clump, but you can make it a little bit more random by you know doing or like B, or hash like B. And so you can combine different groups together. So you can say, you know, nine or B. And you could pass these over, you could pass the nine and the B, you could generate these random hex characters in your application and pass them into the query. Um, and this is, a good, this is a good way to provide a really fast result with pseudo randomness. And depending on how many, depending on how many rows you have, it'll determine how many, you know, maybe how many characters. You maybe wanna do nine E or B A, and maybe that's random enough for you. And that's 35 milliseconds. Now. Is that gonna work for your application? I can't say for sure. It's very interesting. It's very technically correct. It is not purely random, but that might be okay. And again, the reason this is so fast, if we take this inner query and we drop all the way down here and we run that, you see it is pretty fast. And if we run explain on it, it's pretty fast because it is using the index only. It's not actually touching the real table. You thought you were gonna learn how to just select a random row, but hopefully you learned a whole lot more. I've got videos on generated columns and functional indexes and covering indexes if you wanna dive deeper. If you don't wanna dive deeper, that's fine. Go ahead and hit subscribe anyway, and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.